Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at some of the V-Ray options, which is here under the O tab. Uh, you can see I'm going to close that tray, but there's lots and lots of different options here. Um, some of them are kind of uh, more useful or, or let's say more used than others. Uh, you can get into really, really fine detail, and I'm sure, you know, as, as some of the the rendering pros and the visualization experts will we'll probably know a lot more about these and how to use it. Um, but but for us, uh, there's not all that many we need to be concerned about, or at least uh, all that many that we need to know to produce you know a reasonably good image. Uh, the first is just under camera. Uh, this is one of the more important features that you you know you need to know how to alter. Um, I always use a physical camera, or I should say almost always use a physical, a physical camera. There are times where I don't. Um, and if you know anything about photography, uh, a lot of that applies in here. We, we have a lot of familiar terms like shutter speed and f-stop, ISO. Uh, and for those that aren't familiar, uh, it's a, w a way to think about this is, is both film speed and, uh, or, sorry, uh, shutter speed and f, f number are uh, ratios. And we take one divided by this number uh, and that's the length of time uh, that the shutter is open. So right now it'd be one three hundredth of a second. If I change that to two, it'd be a half a second. Um, because it's a bright sunny day, I'm going to go ahead and increase it to say a thousand. So it's one one thousandth of a second. Uh, similarly, the the f number is the the aperture, the actual diameter of the opening that the light would come in through. Uh, so right now we're one over eight. Uh, if you increase that to be 1 over 16, it's a smaller aperture, which means less light would come in. You can also increase that or decrease that to 1 over 4, which would be a larger aperture. More light would come into the camera. Again, uh, you know, these things used in tandem will kind of regulate how bright or how dark the image is. So let's just see, you know, here's 10. Uh, and I go ahead and give this a test render. Uh, you can see it's you know it's a fairly neutral gray. Um, if I came back and said okay we're really going to crank this up to 20, and so it's a very tight small aperture. Uh, it's, it's definitely much darker. But then maybe I'd be able to bring down and, and open up my shutter speed and create that keep the shutter open for a little longer. Um, so here we are in kind of a little bit lighter gray. I'll drop this to maybe 200. It's a lighter gray still. And if I bring this down to something, you know, very large, one over four, uh, it's going to be bright, bright, bright white. Uh, so you know, we can maybe even pick up a small hint of shadow. I don't know. It could be entirely white. Uh, so these are two things to play with, um, just to to work on ways to make those images, you know, balanced as far as white goes. Uh, film speed and ISO. Uh, again, a, a lower number here is going to be a, a darker, a darker image. Um, so here we go, and then we bring this up maybe to 150. Uh, it's a little brighter. And if I bring this up to 300, we can probably be in white land again. Uh, yeah. yeah, oh, we can see a shadow there, but uh, you know, it's it's clearly not the type of rendering we're looking for. Um, so let's see if there's any other things here. Uh, we have depth of field. Uh, there's probably a better way to do this. I can show you in a later video. Motion blur I've never really used because uh, there's other programs that can deal with animation better. Uh, output, we'll get to this as we start to apply materials, and applying materials will be the next video.